Hi everyone, welcome to our video on recursive versus explicit formulas. So by now you should have experience with finding patterns. And here we are looking at a sequence of numbers, the first number being four, the second number being seven, third number is 10. And by now I'm hoping that you can see a pattern there. Our job is to think about how to come up with a formula and a formula would help us find other terms and be a way to express all of the terms in this sequence. The first way we can do that is by using a recursive formula. So a recursive formula is based on what you do to a previous term or multiple terms in order to get the next term, the term that you're looking for. So a recursive formula should seem the most natural to you. So I'm hoping that when you looked at this pattern, you saw in this case that we would take a number, add three to it and produce the next number. That is really the basis for our formula, for a recursive formula. The other type of formula is called an explicit formula. And an explicit formula is based on the term number. So what we mean by term number is one for first term, two for second term, and so on. And when we say based on the term number, what we really mean is that if we plugged in one, we would get four. And if we plugged in two, we would get seven. And if we plugged in a hundred, we would get whatever the one hundredth term is. So that's a different way of thinking. A recursive formula is always is only going to get us the next term. An explicit formula is going to get us whatever term we want to find. So let's get into some new notation. We're going to use subscripts to talk about terms. So a sub n is going to represent the nth term. So if I wanted to say the first term, it would have a little one where the n is. And we're going to be using that, as you see, in just a few moments. We also will need to talk about a previous term. So we're going to need the a sub n minus one term, the term that came before a sub n. And lastly, we're going to need n, which is going to represent the term number. So when we're making a recursive formula, we have to start with the first term. Otherwise, we have nothing to base our, our next term off of. So here we've said that a1 is 4, the first term. And we want to make our formula based off of that. So we're going to say to get the next term, the nth term, that's a sub n, that's going to equal the previous term, that's the a sub n minus 1, plus 3. So it looks weird. The notation, you know, might be new to you, but the idea is simple. Add 3 to the term before it. Now let's switch back to explicit. This one's going to look a little bit more familiar. However, you might be questioning where I get it from. And that's not something we're going to focus on in this video. That's going to be in the next video. I will talk about it a little bit here. So my explicit formula is still going to start out with that a sub n looking for the nth term. Notice that it also equals the starting term that four is going to show up. And we're going to add a three to that four. But that n minus one that's being multiplied with the three is controlling how many times I'm going to add three to it. So there's a little bit of cleverness involved there. And like I said, we're going to come back to that in, in another video. The important part that I want you to really focus on in this explicit formula is that if you plugged in five for n, look like this. And then we would do the arithmetic. We would get four plus three times four, which would be four plus 12, which would be 16. So see that the fifth term should be 16. So recursive and explicit formulas have different pros and cons, you know, strengths and weaknesses. 
which we'll kind of come back to at the end of the video, but let's focus on some more examples first. So in our first example, the goal is to determine a sub five, the fifth term. Now I've given you question A, which is using the recursive formula, and question B, which is using the explicit formula. So I'm gonna tell you ahead of time, you wouldn't be able to know this um, just by looking at this at this moment, but these formulas are for the exact same sequence. So we should get the same fifth number for both of them. But I'm just gonna take you through how we would do that for each of these. Okay, so let's use our recursive formula. We know that the first term is zero. We can only figure out what the second term would be right now. So if I plug in two for n, that means that this previous term here would be a sub one. And I'm still going to plug in a two for n wherever I see an n. Okay, so let's simplify this out. I need to know what a sub one is. Oh, I know that from above, it's zero. And then over here, if we do our arithmetic, this is gonna turn into two times zero, which is zero plus one. And in the end, we get one. So we know that the first term is zero and that the second term is one. Let's figure out the third term. Our formula says that to get the nth term, we need the n minus one term. That's the previous term. Ah, that would mean that this should be the second term. But n is three. So when we get over here, we're still gonna be plugging in a three for the n. And now we're gonna replace that a sub two with what we found above. That's one. And now we have a two times one plus one, and that's gonna give, give us a total of four. All right, see how we're, we're not even getting the fifth term immediately? We have to find the second and then the third and then the fourth. So we still have one more thing we need to find before we even try to get to the fifth term. So on to the fourth term, I'm hoping you're seeing by now that this is telling me that I need the third term and I need to plug in four for n. And let's put the third term in there. That third term is four. Okay, and what is that? Four plus four plus one is nine. And now finally, because we know the fourth term, we have enough to find the fifth term. It's based on the fourth term. And we have to plug in a five for n. And what was the fourth term? Nine. We'll just finish our arithmetic here. Two, oh, what is that? Nine plus six is 15 plus one is 16. So that, you know, that took a lot of space, obviously on the screen, it took time to come up with that. Um, the recursive formula, you know, it's it's kind of bulky. Like it's, it's great because you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's like just one procedure, but that's still some drawback to it with the time that it took. So let's see if we can use our explicit formula, which I've told you we should get the same answer using. Explicit formula means if I want the fifth term, I plug in five, I get the fifth term. So let's go right to the fifth term this time. So we have a sub five. We're gonna be plugging five in for n, squaring it, minus two times five plus one. And let's simplify that. We get 25 minus 10 plus one. Oh, and that's 15 plus one, which is 16, right? So you can, I hope you can see the advantage to an explicit formula. Let's try another problem. New sequence to look at, one, one, two, three, five, eight. 
and our job is to write a formula for the sequence. Now notice it didn't specify what type of formula, so let's choose whichever type makes the most sense to us. Take a look at the pattern, see if you can figure it out. It's not just an adding the same amount each time or subtracting the same amount each time. This one's a little stranger. You may have actually seen this sequence before. It's very special. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. So if you haven't seen it, I am going to fill you in right now so we're all on the same page. It turns out that a Fibonacci sequence is special because you take the first two terms, you add them up to get that third term. And then we would repeat that process. We would take the second and the third term and we would add those up and we would get the fourth term. So you don't just take the term before it, you actually have to take two terms before it, right? So let's write some stuff down here. We said that a sub n minus one, that meant the previous term. Well, if I need to go to the previous term, previous term, that means I gotta go two back, right? So that's going to be an n minus two. So we're going to be using those two terms in order to get the term that we're looking for. Now, I didn't really talk about it. You notice that I just went right into talking about previous terms. If you're thinking in terms of previous terms, you're thinking recursively. That tells me that you should be writing a recursive formula. Now, because this just said write a formula for the sequence, it didn't say what we're going to do with it. I think I'm going to go with whatever makes the most sense in terms of efficiency, right? I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. So I'm going to go with a recursive one. However, if I had to do something else with this formula, I would consider maybe using an explicit formula. We're not going to be finding an explicit formula for this particular uh, sequence. It's actually very, very difficult to come up with. It's another reason we're going with a recursive formula. But if there was a reason to do it, yeah, then, then I might have to take the harder procedure so that another question can be answered more easily. All right, so let's write our recursive formula for this, which means I have to write the starting term. So the first term, a sub one is one. Oh, but in this case, I also need to know the second term is one because I need two terms to do something with. And that now leads to the formula, the recursion, the process that I would keep repeating over and over again. So to get the nth term, I would take the previous term and add it to its previous term. And here is our recursive formula for the Fibonacci sequence. I want to write that down. Fibonacci sequence. And that this is recursive. This is probably a good time for me to tell you whoops, that um, I'm going to be saying things, other people will be saying things in their videos and not necessarily writing them down. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be writing them down. Um, that's something that I would have written down if I had been listening to this video. I like to write down those little details because you never know when you're going to need them. So I highly suggest that if we don't write that stuff down, you should. Okay. so. We're going to wrap this up now with just a little summary of what is good and what's bad about recursive and explicit formulas. So to start us off, recursive formulas make it easy to translate an idea of a pattern into a formula, especially for those stranger patterns like we just did with the Fibonacci sequence. Now that means that the explicit 
kind of has a con. I wouldn't call it, it's, I'm, I put it in the con category. I don't know if it's really a con, but what that means is that an explicit formula, it often requires some type of cleverness or I called it a memorization of a procedure in order to get to that formula. So for you, memorizing um, things is often a good idea before you truly understand them, you know, you'll lead to understanding. But it sometimes these do take some cleverness, you don't see it right away. Um, and I can't teach you and other teachers can't teach you how to see every single pattern. You use the patterns that you've seen to try to figure out things that you haven't seen. Okay, um, let's give the explicit a pro because that's really what this is gonna be all about. The explicit column should have lots of pros. It is really good for finding terms. If I wanna find the fifth term, the 100th term, it doesn't matter. It's the same amount of work. That means that the recursive formula is really inefficient. That's a big con for recursive formulas. But there is still one more pro for recursive formulas. They're good when you know consecutive terms. We knew all those, those terms of the sequence, you know, they were in order, we weren't missing anything. When it comes to not having that, we haven't done one of those yet, and we're gonna see those in the next video. Um, that makes recursives really bad when you only know terms that are spread apart, like the second and the seventh term, or the first term and the 100th term. It, it makes that almost impossible to, to think about recursively. Next up, let's finish out our explicit prose. It is very good when you only know those two terms and you have to know what type of sequence it is. So you're gonna see problems where I tell you the first term and the 100th term, like I just said, but I tell you that it is an arithmetic sequence. And if you don't know what that means, then you're gonna watch the next video and figure that one out. It's also really good for typical patterns. So when I say typical patterns, I mean things like arithmetic, geometric, quadratic, cubic, other things that we're gonna to get to this year. All right, so lesson to be learned here is that you're probably wanna gonna go with an explicit formula with the exception of something that's difficult to describe. If you had a, a, you know, if it's something weird like the Fibonacci sequence, then you're probably gonna go recursive. But for me, I would have to say explicit wins this. All right, until our next video, thanks for watching.